for probably 20, 30 years, I've had this fight with my body. I've blamed my body. I've been angry with my body. I thought my body was broken and against me and my body was my enemy. future self um, this is a great opportunity it's kind of forcing me to be held accountable for actually reflecting on some of this journey so as I went through that before hitting report on this you know the truth is that I actually have had some pretty huge wins this week I ran for the first time on Monday in a long time you know it wasn't any it wasn't a marathon but I, I made it like a mile and a half and my world didn't act yeah, my legs were sore, but it was like a good sore. I felt good about it. I played guitar more, I sang more. Um, you, you know, is it perfect? Uh, no, no, there's definitely pain, um, discomfort, bananas, if you will. But, you know, I think celebrating the wins and realizing that they're wins is key. Keep it up, buddy. Uh, our group session this week was with the physician, Dr. Batson. Uh, which was absolutely amazing, eye-opening experience. Uh, she was both a humble and inspirational woman. Hearing her story as a medical professional and how she got through this and the nuts and bolts of how we can get through this and what we're all dealing with um, was a real confidence builder in, in knowing that I can heal. And it's really galvanized me into action because one thing I do struggle with is compliance, just using the app, carrying on, not just dropping into passive coping techniques. So I really want to work on that this week. And this is, was I just think back to what she was saying, do the work every day and know that I need to do this. Hi, Lenora here. So far, um, I've had a, a couple of eye-opening experiences within the program. I didn't realize just how much the perfectionist tendency uh, has held me back and even contributed to my pain. And it's uh, maybe the seventh or eighth time uh, attempt at making this video. But so far in the program, um, I'm just glad to have people to talk to that understand and getting to learn the science. Um, I feel quite fortunate because my symptoms of pain and um, fatigue and weird headaches um, are have been subsiding over the past year since I started using the Curable app. But I feel really encouraged today because of this, uh, session, the physician session that I just attended and the whole idea that um, of outcome independence, that we don't measure success by pain, but by how little we care about it. And that um, it seems to me to be a very, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And it seems to be a very practical way uh, to lead the way out. And it's something that I am trying very hard to do. Okay, so it's the end of week three for me of the Curable Groups, and we're about to do week four group meeting. Um, I've had three days of 90% pain-free, which is amazing for me. I've had more energy, I've had peace, I haven't had the backlash from doing the physical things that I would normally have. Um, I, the, but the biggest thing that has shifted for me is this understanding of my alarm system. So now when I'm getting catastrophic thoughts or fearful thoughts, negative thoughts, I'm actually able to see that that's not me as a person. That is my alarm system. And it's that part of my brain. And, and I don't have to panic about that anymore. I can just say, okay, what set off my alarm system? What, what am I worried about? What's happening here? And, um, and I can bring it down. Um, and that is just a huge breakthrough for me. Hello again, future self. Uh, what I really want to mention this week is just how informative, insightful, and just all around 
um, relatable and uplifting, you found the most recent workshop video around chronic fear. Um, throughout, you were writing notes, so maybe three times the amount of notes you wrote in this one session compared to the last uh, two, two videos. Please go back and watch this again. Good luck. So first of all, groups are awesome. They're working out really well and this uh, we've just done week four. So what I want to talk about quickly this week is uh, the sense of relief that I've found when telling myself that pain is just my brain's opinion. This week when pain started to set in, I noticed this tiny sense of relief as I told myself that reality, that pain was only my brain's opinion. And as I nurtured that sense of relief, that affirmation or that mantra, whatever you'd call it, that started to work. That was actually a really powerful thing to lean into that sense of relief. So that's something I'm going to continue to do to allow myself to feel relieved or to really believe, I guess, that pain is just my brain's opinion. Uh, this week has been um, a little bit of a challenge. I've been feeling um, the isolation from the COVID as yeah. well as um, just being three weeks out from bunion surgery, not being able to do um, a lot of the things like swimming and walking the dog and just generally being more active. Um, I can definitely tell that that's really affected um, my mood so I've really been trying to do more of the um, uh, meditations and even started uh, doing some EFT tapping. Um, and I actually just had a really good session with my therapist. And a realization that I had is that my hyperhidrosis that I've had since I was a kid is very much tied to my emotions. Uh, we went into some deep stuff and look how much I sweat just while sitting in the air conditioning. So this week has not been a great week, I'll be honest. Maybe it's in the difficult weeks that we learn more. My pain levels have been high and my recently diagnosed Lyme disease has been causing lots of problems. But the group discussion this week supported me immensely. Um, the members themselves were really sensitive and Suzanne, our facilitator, was very skilled at drawing out of each of us practical examples of the ways in which we've applied the strategies we've been learning about in the video. And I write everything down in my red journal. And what supported me this week was this. Pain is not a pain problem, but a fear problem. And fear is the fuel for pain. So we address the fear. That really helped me this week. Thank you. We just finished a group session and um, there was quite a, for me, a powerful moment towards the end around one of the group members who is struggling to look after a parent with dementia. And it made me think a lot about how my symptoms definitely were quite extreme last year while we were in the midst of caring for my mom who eventually died of cancer at the end of the year and how there's so many things about that kind of situation where you want it to be better, you want it to be different, you want to be the perfect caregiver, but you can't change anything, you can't, you can't make them better, you can't get rid of their symptoms. But just being there, accepting that just your loving presence and just being there, just showing up can be good enough. You don't have to be perfect. You can't be perfect in that situation, but you can show up and that's good enough. Okay, so the last week was a little rough. Um, the medication that I used to be on for my migraines uh, left kidney stones behind, and the last kidney stone is causing problems. So surgery, day after tomorrow. But um, the good news is I got a migraine on Monday night after I found out about the surgery, and I went, this is not a migraine. This is you being upset and scared about surgery. And I made some progress with it. So that was really good news. Otherwise, the migraines are doing amazing. Um, I, I feel like the tools are helping me so much with when I'm, definitely when I'm having pain, I'm learning how to let myself out of it. Um, I'm still learning about getting in front of my emotions before the pain starts. So on to next week. Hey, future self. 
couple of things I want to mention for you this week. One, you slept last night five hours without waking up, and then you slept a new, another two hours after that. And in fact, I think you did that the past two nights. So that's pretty incredible. Good job there. Second thing, and I think it's it's pretty big. It's even though, you know, maybe your physical discomfort has actually ebbed backwards a little bit in the past week or so, your attitude has stayed the same, if not improved. You haven't let yourself slip into helplessness. You haven't fallen into a downward spiral. You've kept going forward, improving. And as a result, you're better for it. Keep it up, bud. All right. I can't pretend this has been anything other than a really difficult week, both pain-wise, new diagnosis, osteoarthritis all through my neck and back and my hip, x-rays on my hip, and ooh, devastating personal family time. So it's been a super difficult week. But... I've really used what I've been learning in Curable. I've been using understanding uh, when I feel unsafe and how that affects my body. And I learned so much about my perfectionism and I've got a lot of work to do, but the information in the video and my notes are gonna really help me. And I felt so held safely um, by the facilitator and the group in the group session. It was very special. So, week five, childhood adversity. Interesting week. Um, not one that I was looking forward to, but you know what? It was actually good. And uh, the group session we just had was was really great. And it was it was great to see how everyone held space for each other. It was it was super positive. Um, but in terms of this week, I've been noticing, I think, a little bit better how I have not allowed myself to feel my emotions. And so I think I'm getting just a little bit better at noticing and allowing myself to feel emotions and then not allowing those emotions to translate into, uh, into pain. And so when I feel an emotion, uh, be that fear or anger or something like that, just allowing the emotion to come up, to pass through and not then turn into um, a pain or a, um, a difficult symptom. So that's something that's been a huge win for me this week. We had a really uh, productive group session this week, or I certainly found it that way, uh, discussing many of the topics Dr. Clark had brought up in the interview, um, especially uh, around this analogy of dropping a weight, which we all seem to grasp onto and there were some other lovely analogies that came out from other people uh, that really resonated for me, uh, along with discussions around forgiveness, what it is, what it means for us and those we need to forgive. Um, and for me personally, um, diving into past stresses from childhood have certainly been an eye opener and things that I never thought trauma that was pretty big that I thought it never really affected me, I think actually has, and there's something there that I need to dive into. This week was really, really tough. Um, I noticed a lot of resistance in myself and procrastination in doing the work because it's um, it, f it has been focused on childhood experiences, and um, I uncovered a lot of lowercase t traumas um, that really all feed back to, to the root that I've kind of put together as um, not feeling accepted or belonging uh, because of uh, my, my initial experiences with religion and church um, in a non-religious immediate family in the Bible Belt South um, and just being um, not feeling like I was good enough for God not understanding and not having those conversations with my parents. Um, maybe it's time to have some of those conversations. We'll see. So this week I had some surgery. I had them take out the last kidney stone that was remaining from the depermate that I'd been on for six years for the migraines. Uh, we think that's what was causing the, the kidney stones. And it gave me an opportunity 
to grow, I think. Um, I've always gone into surgeries and things like that thinking, you know, well, maybe if I get sick enough, maybe if I'm in the hospital, I'll finally be important enough or valuable enough to my family and the people who love me. And instead, this time I started consciously thinking about and talking to the little girl and telling her that it was okay, that everything was gonna be fine. Instead of waiting for somebody else to say that to me, like I say it to everyone else, I went ahead and said it to my little girl in here. Um, and I realized that instead of it necessarily being a bad thing, that I always seem to take care of myself, that it's actually a superpower and that it's pretty incredible that I can take care of myself. And I thought of that in terms of the childhood stories and things that we talked about this week and those favorite childhood characters who were you know, independent and could take care of themselves. And the fact that I can look out for me is a good thing. So I'm learning, definitely learning. So I'm feeling a lot better again today. Um, I got real stuck in the emotional stuff last week and um, was just going real hard out at everything. Uh, um, by Friday I was pretty exhausted and emotional so I kicked back a bit and let go a bit and uh, everything has settled again. Um, what was interesting was that the pain didn't really flare up which was really positive, I thought. Um, I really enjoyed the self-compassion video um, that I've watched so far, I haven't finished it, and it speaks to me. It's like it answers the questions before I've even asked them. And um, it's a process I've been thinking on for a little while, but it's really good to have it um, just put in such a way that I can see how I've separated myself off from healing and um, yeah, there's really lots to digest and I look forward to my group tomorrow. Hi, checking in again this week. Uh, we did perfectionism. Uh, really um, eye-opening. Building on, on last week, it really felt like the jigsaw was coming together. Uh, I think learning where it came from, perfectionism, as from formative childhood experiences, so insightful um and then for me the healthy striving versus perfectionism uh the how we deal with outcomes successes or failures with compassion rather than self-berating which is was his standard practice for me so brilliant so i really feel i've got some good tools in the box to to move forward this week was on perfectionism and I thought I related to it a bit, um, but not hugely strongly. But what, uh, what came out for me as I did the workshop and um, attended the groups was that I really identify with what I'm going to call emotional perfectionism. What that means for me is that um, I, I guess I feel like I need to be emotionally perfect in that I absolutely can feel things emotionally that I see as positive, so happiness, joy, um, positive emotions, but when things that I feel are negative, so to speak, so um, anger, sadness, that sort of thing, I feel like I'm not somehow allowed to feel those things. So allowing myself to feel those things and, and move through that is um, a perfectionistic trait that I now have been able to recognise and hopefully I can um, do that a little bit better in the future. Hello again, future self. So this week, you're about four days, I think, removed from a fairly traumatic fracture of your left clavicle. Obviously not the best news. I'm sure you remember it pretty well. Um, but really the point I want to drive home this week is that this is merely a detour on the road to healing. In fact, the version of me that I'm conversing with right now has hopefully already healed from this. So let this be a lesson to you of how you can heal from everything else. I've been feeling a bit guilty about being part of this program 
recently because I've I've just been feeling quite good, like like very good, and doing almost all of my normal activities. But then a couple of days ago, I had a setback and uh, an intensification or reemergence of symptoms. I still feel it a bit. I felt uh, because it was intense. I certainly. Um, questioned, okay, am I, I thought I was on the right track and now why is this happening? And then I, then I remembered to just stay calm and be curious about the symptoms and tell myself, you know, you've, you've got this, you are safe. It's, it's okay. You, you, you don't need to be, um, in a flap about this. And it really helped. So, I don't feel guilty anymore, right? I feel like I'm in the right place in this program. Lenora here, week six. It's been um, a pretty tough week for me. Um, had a major pain flare up after going for a bike ride and then doing a little yard work. Maybe I got a little over ambitious. Um, I don't think I had any fear surrounding doing these things. They bring me a lot of joy. So I'm still trying to understand that relationship between the fear and doing the things that I love and still having pain, a lot more pain the next day. I finally got brave enough to, um, and found a therapist that I trust enough to just go through all the things that I now realize are, are traumas, not capital T traumas, but a lot of lowercase t traumas. I'm exhausted right now, and that's just all I have. This week was the inner critic, um, and we discussed in the group how many of us had found this quite difficult. Um, for me personally, the intersection with the self-compassion and perfectionism and driving down to what our innermost fears are is no easy task and requires some real thinking and can throw you emotionally, which maybe this means it's hitting the kernel of things um, and trying to disavow these beliefs and habits we have from what this little guy on our shoulder is saying is, um, is hard. We just finished our group call and it was pretty amazing today. Uh, this week, has proved very powerful for me working on the inner critic and in some ways that I think I have learned a lot in my life previously but that I'm developing all of these really powerful new skills and our facilitator was incredible today she helped me answer so many questions and she taught us so much and she gave us tools and she helped us understand the tools that um that we've been learning in the videos and she helped me get a hold on this feeling that I've been kind of going up and down and up and down. And um, this week was the first week that I really started to blend all of those lessons together and see how they work together and how they give me new ways um, and grown up ways <laughs> that I can work with this and it feels like a process and it feels good and it feels good to notice and it scares me, <laughs> but I, I have ways to work with that now. And I'm feeling really good and really proud. And I know that when I'm not, I have ways to work with that. I have a toolkit. Hi, so um, this week I am right in the middle of an opportunity to practice self-compassion and inner critic work together. Um, Saturday I overdid it physically, like big time, and I knew it, and I carried on anyway. And um, today I've been in pain and I'm absolutely exhausted, and I've been thinking very much on the self-compassion um, healing cycle that I learned about the week before last. and versus the perfectionist and I'm really thinking in my mind of acceptance, rest and self-compassion today and the inner critic wanted to come in last night and really say you should have listened to that voice, you should have stopped um, 
But you know what? I'm starting to see that I can apply this self-compassion at any point in my journey and I can say, well, you know what? I didn't listen, but I'm still learning. I'm still learning to hear and then I'm still learning to do the right thing. So I'm taking this video on holiday because I want to remember where I am. I also want to remember what a tough old time it has been recently. And yet the video we've watched on the inner critic has still been really helpful. And the seven strategies to deal with the inner critic, they're brilliant. I chose inner challenger. And this week on holiday, I'm going to be preparing my inner challenger speech, which I'm working on now, but it does start I am not going to let you, the inner critic, put me down in the way you do anymore. And I imagined it playing out on a Zoom screen as if I'm with all my group. And instead of there being one of my group in the last box, it's the inner critic keeps popping up and I'm going to press that mute button in future. But of course, first of all, I need to spot it and I need to understand the fear that creates it. I've had a few realizations in the last couple of weeks through doing the program work. Um, one, that perfectionism is um, a learned coping mechanism. Um, so that has given me kind of an eye into how I got here. Uh, the inner critic work we did this week was particularly helpful. Some of the other things that uh, I feel like I'm, I'm now in a place where, where I can do some deeper work um, with a therapist one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I revealed a trauma to him, my therapist, that happened to me four and a half years ago. And tonight I'm going to share that with my husband and I'm hoping for love and support. Hey buddy, the main thing I wanna mention this evening for this week is uh, that again, this was another really uh, dense and valuable workshop, the Mastering Your Emotions session, that is. Uh, I would highly recommend it as one to go back to work through again um, and, and reference some of the strategies uh, for, for future use. In particular, the bit about uh, you know coping mechanisms when intense emotions arise really resonated numbing, powering through, wallowing, definitely uh, all uh, experiences I'm, I'm familiar with. And again, uh, some of the strategies uh, for processing these intense emotions seems like they could be valuable. So let's come back and have another look at this down the road. So we just had our session on emotions and um, one of the participants said something that really resonated with me. She said, um, that pain is more acceptable than some of the emotions that we feel. And I've, I've struggled all my life with both fear and anger and feeling that both were inappropriate. They've both gotten me into a lot of trouble, led to a lot of rejection. So it makes sense when I think about it. A lot of my physical symptoms and pain um, mimic how I feel when I'm afraid or when I'm angry. And um, uh, that's just been quite a, um, a revelation to me today that that somehow the acceptability of those emotions has been, was not, was, they weren't acceptable. And so I'm in pain instead. So I found this video on the emotional stuff quite challenging. There was quite a lot in there and um, and I was probably having a bit of a tough week anyway, but I had a real breakthrough a few days after and after we discussed it on our group um, in that I had a lot of emotion and I didn't know what to do with it. And I suddenly realized I pushed them away all the time, my emotions. So I just said, okay, I'm going to allow you to feel whatever you want to feel today, Kate, because most of your life you've been shut down, especially as a child. So I didn't really know how to carry on and do that, but it somehow worked and I just kept holding that saying, it's okay to feel whatever I'm feeling today. Um, and then I got a breakthrough on what that was all about. And I have had some healing in that area was a thing from childhood. So it's kind of working. 
Lenora here, week nine, a couple of days late. This is take 14, I think. Um, I just woke up from a nap. Uh, I've been napping a little bit more lately, but I'm not gonna look at that as any kind of setback. Um, the last few weeks have been huge. Um, I revealed something really awful that hurt both of us to my partner. But what good has come out of it is that I think that he finally gets it um, and is going to give me the support uh, rather than unknowingly enabling my illness to further. So having that is just enormous for me. Um, and it's only been a couple of weeks since I've really come to understand and accept that I can get out of this. There's, there's a life for me and my family. So I'm gonna keep doing the work. I listened to a podcast recently and the interviewee said for her, having recovered from severe symptoms, that the pain now for her was the biggest, littlest part. I now start to see when people express that sort of sentiment, what they mean. It's not just about pain. I came into this with almost daily migraines and other um, symptoms, but I'm really humbled by finding out how little I knew about myself. I thought I having lived in this body and in this mind for some time that I really knew myself and I didn't and I am really enjoying finding out that I didn't know and finding out more each day um, about the psychology behind it and the science behind it is fantastic. A few days ago I decided to stand up to my inner critic for real not just in a letter and I was down on the south coast in the UK and it was a grey day, it was pretty windy and cold but I was watching the body borders in the sea. Now I used to love to be in the sea and I hate those used to's. I was standing there thinking to myself, oh it's too cold, I've got no wetsuit, I can't possibly do this anymore and I spotted that mean, bullying, life-limiting voice of my inner critic. And I turned towards it and I just said, I'm going to try. I'm going to find out for myself. I went in the sea without a wetsuit and I ended up bodyboarding. I had a blast and I was able to give myself some evidence that I can do some things. And it was brilliant and it stayed with me. I've got the evidence in a photo. Hi, I'm in my painting shirt and I'm in a room that I just recently painted and it's a huge win for me that I got this done because house painting is an activity that I have felt incapable of doing for the past couple of years because I would get dizzy and nauseous and get very uncomfortable, weird headaches while doing this sort of thing. Um, but I decided to do it I had some mild symptoms. I didn't worry about them. I just kind of relaxed and said, this isn't going to hurt me. And I kept going. I, I broke the, the job up into several small tasks. And now it's all done. And I feel great that I have this lovely, freshly painted room. And that I got it done. And that I didn't um, get too worried about the symptoms to the point that they kind of just went away. For, for this period. So I feel it's a huge win. It was a very good week. I'm about two months into the Curable Groups program and I used to get 24, 25 migraines a month almost every day. And I'm down to maybe one a week, which is kind of amazing to me. <laughs> and that's no other medical interventions, no pharmaceuticals, no medicines. Uh, about one a week. Wow. I still get little niggles, but I have strategies and techniques to work with them. I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to write more. I think I could still be doing more of that. Um, I'm feeling very grateful for the group of women that I'm in a group with. Uh, we don't have any men in our group, but the group of women in my curable group are very kind, very supportive. Um, it's been really interesting. We know, we know nothing, almost nothing, about each other's pain, but I think we've learned a lot about how courageous and brave and kind this group is. And that has made a big difference for me, I think. Being and choosing to be part of curable groups 
instead of doing the work by myself has been really powerful for me. And it's created a really good sense of um, commitment and commitment to being there and commitment to other people. And for me, that's always something that's motivating. It's easier to take care of other people, um, but they encourage me to take care of myself. And that's really beautiful. I'm really grateful for it. Uh, this week we did people pleasing, uh, setting boundaries. Uh, there were some really amazing stories came out of the group. Um, some, some deep, deep sharing, which just really reiterated to me the, the warmth and gratitude I feel towards these people, and how much I just so much feel that I want them to be happy. Um, I like thrive in the stories of successes and um, empathize with the uh, with the setbacks people have and it's it really inspires me to help myself more and I really feel more calm and grounded afterwards and any uh, discomfort I have is definitely lower just just through these meetings. So the intensity of pain is still a lot less. I've hardly got any of the systemic muscle pain that renders me kind of like incapacitated. I haven't had that for a number of weeks now and I'm starting to just build up slowly a little bit more strength. I'm still having setbacks. I'd say my average week contains of some setback or seeming setback, but I think actually it's more emotional work that's being done and then I might get a few days break and then the next thing will come up but I'm starting to more accept that rhythm and trust that the healing and the good times will come back and they're not taking as long um, I even did a little bit of strength training yesterday only 15 minutes but for me that's good um, and so far today I'm fine with that the boundaries work was amazing and I've been able to hold my bubble um, even when my partner had a good rant about something, I just sat there and stayed in my bubble and it all bounced off. Hey, Lenora here. It's week 10, a few days late, but who cares? I just got back from a 15 mile bike ride, something I haven't done in years. Uh, had to face the fear of riding on the street um, to get to the trail. So street and trail riding. That was awesome. I also really took joy in just saying hi to strangers that I passed. Uh, last week's lesson uh, really, really was a good one for me. The boulders and backpacks analogy really hit home, as well as giving me better ideas on how to set boundaries, um, of which I've set a few, um, both physical and other types of boundaries with uh, my husband, and I'm gonna continue um, because it's really making a big difference in just the way I feel every day. Today is a good day. Tomorrow is going to be an even better day. <sighs> the last week of uh, Curable Groups, we s spoke a lot about gratefulness and there is so much I feel personally that I have to be grateful for. One of those things was just today, my 14 year old daughter asked me to go on a hike with her. I've had 13 years of chronic pain and today I said yes and it was a long and steep hike and I was absolutely fine so that's something huge I think to be grateful for. Um, so 13 years of chronic pain and I'm not in pain. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have challenges, I think I will in the future. I think that's the human experience I guess but if I can come out of pain, so many, so many issues, so many things, chronic fatigue, migraines, nerve pain, injuries, so many things, too many to list. I think anybody can. I can't believe that I'm nearly at the end of my curable journey. Um, the last session on joy and gratitude and play was so much fun. It really showed me how we've gelled as a group and come together to feel so comfortable in each other's company, to dance and laugh on Zoom. And um, I'm just really appreciating all of the tools that I've been learning and putting them into practice. It's just, um, I've realized that my pain was not about what I thought it was about. And the solution was definitely not what I thought it was. Uh, it's just quite mind blowing when I look back at it to think that the tools I've got are the answer to so much in my life, uh, physical and emotional pain. And I really feel like they're great tools that not only 
are going to help me for the rest of my life, but also things I can pass on to my children. Um, it's, yeah, way exceeded my expectation. Lenora here, week 11. Um, we're just about to have our final session of the uh, Curable Groups experience, officially anyway. I'm really stoked that um, looks like almost all of our group wants to uh, continue meeting um, on our own. So I know that's gonna, gonna help all of us just to continue this journey together. Um, I've had a little bit of a setback in the last week, um, but this time is different because this time I know why and I know what work I need to do to uh, keep that from happening in the future. I know it's going to take a lot of work um, because it's something having to do with my family, but uh, I'm committed to it and um, it's taken me less time now to bounce back from uh, that type of setback than it would before. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, I feel better than I have since descending into this void uh, mentally and physically it's getting better and I feel more uh, enabled to to move into a positive future that I know awaits for me. Really all I want to say um, for this last week following my last official session with my curable group is how much I realized the just the experience of getting together with a group of relatively kind, caring individuals that are going through a very similar journey has always positively affected me. Over the last 12 weeks, I have been in less severe pain less often. And I've not taken the strong meds that I only take when things are really severe. I've not taken them much at all. And the thing is that curable groups, it's not a destination. It's a journey. And the journey must continue for me. I basically have most of my life back. I'm hiking, I'm kayaking. I'm, I'm not afraid of my body anymore. I know that it was just trying to protect me. And uh, I'm grateful for that and grateful to Curable. What a journey this has been. And I'm happy now to say that this is just the beginning for me. I learned so much in the last three months about myself and about my past and how to reframe it and how to think about my future in a way that really makes me excited. Okay, Paige, here's what I want you to remember. Your life has changed dramatically. Don't forget how much care there is in your group. Don't forget how gentle you can be. I know you're good at being strong. Um, don't forget what it's like to live with light. Embrace light in the rooms. Know that you don't have to be scared anymore. I'm going to take care of you. I will always take care of you and look out for you. You are safe. There's no need to be afraid. There's no pain that can follow you. You are in charge and I'm here to help. So Curable Groups has ended. It's hard to know how to sum up what has been the most amazing three months of my life, I guess. Um, at first I thought it would be too introspective. I didn't know if I was able for it really, but in some ways it started as an introspective journey, uh, looking inward, but it's become so much more than that. And it's become so much more than ending or starting to end chronic pain. And yes, um, for anyone who's interested, my chronic pain feels like something that is in the rearview mirror. Um, I, it's, it's just something that doesn't dominate my life any longer, which is just absolutely incredible. I'm very, very grateful to the team at Curable um, and very grateful to all of the people in my Curable group as well. It's been extraordinary and something, the tools that I've learnt is, is something that I'm going to continue to use, I think, forever. So it's my final check-in and I've been reflecting on how sceptical and doubtful I was in the beginning 
Um, especially after our first group meeting, I was expecting more teaching somehow and I was skeptical that us talking about the material between ourselves would be enough, that that would actually work. And it has, it's, it's been an incredible journey. It's been a game changer for me. And I think on reflection, the biggest thing is that for probably 20, 30 years, I've had this fight with my body. I've blamed my body. I've been angry with my body. I've thought my body was broken and against me. And my body was my enemy. And since doing this work, not just because the pain has, has reduced, because it hasn't completely gone, I'm still having my struggles, but I am now friends with my body. And I see that it wasn't broken. It was actually just trying to protect me the best way that it knew how. And it feels so good to finally want to be in my body. Thank you, Curable.